In the figure below, the switch is left in position A for a long time interval and is then quickly thrown to position B. Rank the magnitudes of the voltages across the four circuit elements a short time thereafter from the largest to smallest. All right, largest to smallest, got it. So we start in position A for a long time and goes to B. All right, so when it's in A, we're gonna have current going up this way, down through the inductor, through this guy, and then back here. So that's gonna create a current in the uh, inductor. So I'm gonna draw this guy up real quick. That's gonna draw the water wheel, because uh, that's hydraulic analogy, that's how I think of this. And I think that's, the, oh, that is terrible. I can do better than this. I have fairly low standards in life, but I can do better than that. Yeah, sufficiently adequate. So, mm. so current comes up this way, pushes the water wheel around this way, and then pushes down this way. So then, when the current finally stops, the water wheel still has all this momentum, and it's still spinning. And that water wheel is still going to continue to push uh, the current through, even after the source of pressure is cut off. Um, and then, and eventually, the water wheel, you know, due to friction or whatever. In this case, it'd probably be I squared R losses. Um, the water wheel will slow down. Therefore, the current that's being constantly pushed through the inductor will abate. I think that's a word? Abate. A-B-A-T-E. So first thing we need to do is find out what the current is initially before we throw the switch. So before we throw the switch, um, the inductor is going to be spinning. And this is going to be offering no resistance to the uh, flow of current initially because it's already been flowing for a long time. It's already spun up. It's going. So we're just going to use Ohm's law here. Ooh, convenient. So I'm going to say epsilon equals um, V equals IR. Hop. Right this way, Ohm's law. There we go. So current equals epsilon over R, which in this case is 12 volts over 12 ohms, which equals 1 amp. Come on. And up oh, end of the board. End of the board. Yeah, you see right there? Ooh, that's a pretty straight line. All right, so we have initial current of 12 amps. Okay, switches left in position, and then quickly throw into position B. All right, so then we go to position B. So then it's like this. So we initially had one amp going down here. One amp. As soon as the position is throw, that water wheel is going to keep moving. So that's going to be one amp coming out of here, even after the switch is throw. One amp, bam! Just like the capacitor would maintain the same uh, potential across it, no opposite. Um, the inductor is going to maintain the same current across it. So we're going to have one amp going through this resistor, and we're going to have one amp going through that resistor. So we now need to find. We can now find the um, voltage drop across this guy. So I'm going to do. Start off by finding the voltage uh, drop, I guess drop, across this guy right here. So this is going to be uh, V equals IR, which in this case is going to be 1 times 12. This is going to be 12 volts. Bam! 12 volts across this resistor. Is that true? Yeah, okay. Actually, I'm going to say slightly less than 12 volts because that there's one amp, but they say short time thereafter. And so what current is going to do, if I drew a picture of current versus time, this will be current, this will be time, this is where we start, it's going to die off like this. And where this is one amp right here. And when they say a short time thereafter, what they mean is oh, straight up and down line, almost, close enough. What they're saying is right there. Bam. Like right there. So, then you follow it up, and you're like, well, this might just be 0.99 amps. So, it's going to be close to 1 amp, but slightly less. And that's why they say, 
that when they say short time thereafter, that's what they mean. Very short. So almost one amp, but not quite one amp. Approximately one amp. Okay. So I'm just going to do less than 12 volts. All right, so now we're going to look at this guy. Same process, except now we're going to do V equals IR. We're working voltages, right? Yeah, okay. So now we're going to have 1 times 1,200, which would be 1,200 volts. Bam! Well, that escalated quickly. And this is, this is what they're trying to show you here. I think this is called inductive kick. Is that a word? Is that a word? Inductive kick. Ooh, inductive cooking. Ooh, a snubber. God, it sounds like a something from the Sopranos. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, I think it's called inductive kick. It's where you get this massive voltage across the resistor. That's why you get the 1200 volts, and all you had to use to get that was your 12 volt battery. That's because you had an inductor that you put all this energy to and then uh, put it through. Of course, it's going to expend a lot of energy and it's going to die down real quick, but initially we'll have 1200 volts. Less than, but close. All right, so now we're going to use Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law. Basically, if you start at any point, you add them all together and you're going to get zero. So, the way I'm going to look at this then is we're going to have uh, voltage across the inductor, use L, plus, I'm going to say minus. Because these guys are actually supposed to be minus because they're offering resistance. Their voltage drops. Minus 12 volts minus 1200 volts equals zero. So voltage across the inductor will actually equal 1, 2, 1, 2 volts. Bam! Because it had the inductor has to provide the voltage difference to create both the voltage drop across the 12 ohm and across the 1200 ohm. So you get 1, 2, 1, 2 volts. All right? And then the battery, well, it's the battery there. I tell you right here. Bam! 12 volts. All right, so what we want to start with is the voltage across the inductor. Hmm, we only have one where the voltage across the inductor is the biggest. Well, I'm gonna say it's that one. Okay, so then we're gonna have this guy because the, the inductor has to compensate for both the 1200 and the 12. So I already know it's gonna be this one. But I'm gonna go through the rest of it and make sure it makes sense anyway. So yep, then the next will be the 1200. The next will be the 12 volt battery, which is exactly 12 volts. And then we'll have the 12 ohm resistor, which will be slightly less than 12 ohms. Yeah. So that's how you do this one. That's the concept in here, introducing you to inductive kick. And the way I like to think about um, the inductor using a hydraulic analogy, if you don't know what the hydraulic analogy is, you should go Wikipedia. It's pretty good. It helps you get a basic fundamental understanding of it. Eh, mostly. So, hmm, didn't mean to move that. Yep. That's how you go through this one. I like to use Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law to find the um, uh, voltage across the inductor. So that's how you go through that one. Good luck. See you on problem three.